Welcome to the TJ Malden Leadership Podcast, where we talk about life, leadership, and the gospel. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome uh, to the TJ Malden Leadership Podcast. Listen, we, we've said this forever. For I don't know how many episodes we're in. What episode is this, Lindley? Episode 20 of season two, right? So, And we did, what, 36 on season one or... 22, not not 36. I don't know where I got 36 from. 22. So uh, we always say, or at least allude to the, that we want to talk about life, leadership, and the gospel. And what I recognized, I don't know, maybe a week or so ago, and I was really grappling. I really didn't want to do this podcast today um, because I was grappling with, there, there's like three or four different ideas uh, that I've wanted to kick around on here. And I just haven't been able to land. I haven't been able to land on like, man, what do I want to talk about? What do people want to hear um, you know, what, what headspace am I in that I can share that's going to be beneficial to your life and your leadership and maybe your, your spiritual walk, your spirituality, your parenting, your marriage, whatever it is, like what, it, what can I gift or what can I give away that I've been learning lately or that I've been thinking about lately, um, that would be beneficial to you. And then, um, <laughs> I had this thought and, and it really came out of a conversation that I had yesterday. And so, um, I'm, I'm, speaking at an event um, next year, and the guy that's running the event, he asked me this question, and it was, it was good. And it was really simple and anticlimactic in so many ways, but he asked me very, very pointedly, he said, TJ, what's, what's God been saying to you lately? And he said just like that. He was like, well, like what, what's he was like, like, I can give you a topic to do this conference with. I can, you know, I, like, like I can build a topic for you, but like, is there something God's been teaching you lately that you might want to share with us? And when he said that, like, like I, I'm a pastor, right? So every week I'm in the word of God every week. I'm in the word of God all the time. I'm thinking about verses. I'm thinking about sermons. I'm thinking about series. And I'm always receiving information, you know, whether it's, you know, uh, from theologians or from scripture. But when he asked me that, asked me that question, he said, TJ, what has God been teaching you? My mind went to three places. And, um, and, and really what I want to talk about today is that because I have given a lot of stuff recently on life and leadership, but I, I've kind of neglected, I think, at some point, the thing that I'm the most passionate about and the thing that I'm in love with the most, and that's the gospel. And so when he asked me that question, he said, TJ, what, what has God been teaching you lately? I kind of paused, and my, my mind went to these three places. And before I get to those three, this is what I want to say, because this is what I, I'm almost convicted about, I think, a little bit, is that God is always desiring to show us something, to teach us something, to say something to us, even in the silence, even in those seasons where we feel like we're praying and we're not hearing from God, or we feel like we're trying to engage in a local church maybe, or, or maybe you're just taking your first few steps towards Christianity or investigating the gospel. And, and, and you wonder like, man, I just don't feel like I, I hear God. What am I trying to, what is God trying to say? Or, or does God still speak? Or what's the purpose of the Bible? Even in all those moments, God is trying to, aiming to teach us something. And so I, I started asking myself a different question after my conversation with him. And it was a question that I, I thought on even this morning. I was up, um, I don't know, around 445 this morning. And, and so I, I've had um, it's 10 now, so you, you, you won't be listening to this at 10. Maybe you will. Maybe this is like dead on time for you. But anyways, um, I've had hours, and I've just been ruminating with this one, this one question. Not so much, TJ, what has God been teaching you? But, man, what have I been willing to learn? What have I been willing to receive? And I wonder sometimes if we say, man, God, God's not teaching me something right now, or, or I'm not hearing from God, or I'm not getting anything out of my church, or I'm not getting anything out of my small group, or I'm not, I'm not really growing spiritually. I wonder if it's because not so much that God doesn't have a desire to download an input into our lives, but we're not in a season where we're willing to learn. We're willing to receive instruction and receive, maybe it's correction, maybe it's receive encouragement and affirmation. I mean, there was a season in my faith walk, and I'm going to get to my three things in a minute, but there was a season in my faith journey where I was, I was unwilling to receive grace from God. Like, I understood just the justice of God. I understood um, even, even mercy, but like, 
God's riches at Christ's expense, like God putting all of my sin on the shoulders of Jesus and Jesus dying in my place, um, because I, I knew I deserved separation from God. I knew I deserved hell, right? And and the fact that God would send his one and only son to redeem my filthy life, I was like, man, I just can't, I can't wrap my mind around this. So I willingly lived in shame for a while over my sin and over my past because in my mind, this is what I knew I deserved. And I was unwilling to receive that grace from God. And, uh, and, and by God's grace um, and his goodness, uh, I did receive that grace and, and begin to live in that and that new identity and that worth of who I am in the gospel. But today I want to give you three things that, that I, I feel like I'm at a place, and I think all of us ebb and flow, right? All of us, we hit those mountaintop experiences and those valleys where we're willing to learn, we're unwilling to learn, we stiff arm, um, like we stiff arm information or we stiff arm the Lord or we, we, we kind of push away from the Holy Spirit or whatever, even accountability and, and, and good relationship. And, and the three things are really, really simple. And the first is this, um, and, and I, I said this to our college students because I, I had to dig through my heart and my mind. I'm like, okay, in this season of my life, what does God teach me? I just told the crew before we started, I was like, man, Ted, I, I just miss my grandmother today. My grandmother passed away um, eight weeks ago yesterday. And I'm like, man, what, what has God been teaching me in this season? And not even so much what has he been teaching me, but what have I been willing to learn? And here's the first thing. In a season that just full transparency, um, man, I, I have been sad. I, I have felt distant. I have felt shut off, even from my friends and even at work some. <clears throat> and so I started asking myself and digging in this, what, what am I willing, what have I been willing to learn? And what am I, what am I embracing? What is, what is a truth about God and a truth about myself that I'm, I'm embracing? And the first one is this, uh, Psalm 63, one says, Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you, or earnestly, depending on the translation you read. Um, he says, Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly or early will I seek you. My my flesh longs for you, like, like I'm thirsting for you, God, in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. And and what I'm learning, even I've been following Jesus for 22 years, and what I'm relearning or what I'm, I'm allowing God to teach me in the season is that this faith that we have has to be personal. Like when, when David declared that in Psalm 63, there, there, there's this, this declaration of, oh God, you are my God. So like my grandmother reared me in the faith. Um, I, my parents uh, split when I was young, so I moved in with my grandparents and lived with them off and on. And my grandmother, man, when she would point me to Jesus, she would tell me about Jesus. She would pray over me. She would literally like physically lay hands on my head and she would pray uh, protection over my life. She would pray that I would come to faith in God. She would pray that I wouldn't be so insane and get in so much trouble. Like she would just, she would just pray over me all the time. And, and she had a faith. And what I'm re- realizing now, even after following Jesus for 22 years, is like her faith can't sustain me. Her faith couldn't sustain me. My grandfather, as incredible as he was to me, his faith couldn't sustain me. At some point in my life, and, and I'm seeing this for the first time because now I have a, a seven-year-old who's turned eight in just a few days, and my heart for my son is like, I want him to see the gospel at a young age. I don't want him to walk through some of the wounds that I walk through, like so, uh, some of the self-inflicted wounds that I, I put on myself and, 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 and created my own drama and trauma because of sin when I was younger. And so I'm like, like I so desperately want him to see Jesus and delight in Jesus and my daughter as well. But my faith can't be his faith. Like it has to be personal. And, and I'm seeing this from two angles, right? I see my grandmother who passed away, who who gifted me this legacy of faith, but like her faith can't save me. Her faith can't establish me. Her faith can't keep me. And And even my son, like I'm recognizing like my faith can't win him to the gospel. My faith can't like sustain him or keep him or secure his destiny in heaven with King Jesus forever, at some point he has to have a personal faith in Christ. And so that's the first thing that I, I'm just, I'm relearning really in the season and, season and get, that God is just teaching me is that, man, I, you know, and, and obviously this isn't like some audible, like I'm not prophesying or you some audible voice from God, God saying this, but but like through the scriptures, you can clearly see the Holy Spirit articulating to the church and to you and me today, like God wants a personal relationship with us. God does not want to be seen as some distant figure out there in the ethos that, that is unapproachable. 
He wants a genuine personal relationship with you. And and that personal relationship has has nothing to do with your ability to approach him or your ability to justify yourself or your ability to be good or your ability to perform or to be godlike it has everything to do with god's personality of creating relationship with humans he created us for relationship and community and so i'm looking at the scriptures in this season i taught this to our college students about 6 weeks ago maybe 5 weeks ago it was just this real fresh reality that, man, God wants a personal relationship. And, and here's my heart. The reason, that, the reason that I do my job, the reason I get up every week and preach, the reason that I lead musical worship, the reason that I'm doing this podcast is so that somebody might recognize that the God of the universe wants a personal relationship with them. And they turn from, they turn from you know, white-knuckling their own life and surrender their life to Christ. Surrender your life to Christ and you have a personal relationship with King Jesus, personal relationship with the God of the universe so that your declaration can be like David's declaration, which is like my declaration, which was my grandmother's declaration. Oh God, you are my God. Like this personal relationship. Oh God, you're not just my pastor's God. Oh God, you're not just my grandmother's God. Oh God, you're not just my family's God. You're not just a Baptist God or a Methodist God or a Pentecostal God or a Presbyterian God. Oh God, you are my God. And so that's the first thing that I've, I've, I've really just kind of been grabbing a hold of and, and thinking on and sitting on. And the season that I'm in is like, and like I said, like walking through that sadness of, of losing my grandmother and even, even personal things in my life that I'm grappling with in this season, uh, areas that, that I know I'm deficient and then some areas where I'm grappling with insecurity where I just feel deficient and trying to, you know, make sure I'm not living in a false dichotomy in some areas in some ways and I recognize like, man, God, God wants to deal with me on those things. Like he wants a personal relationship where he can address those things. Like he, he can speak to me. He can heal me. He can transform me and he can be a personal God to me. And, and he wants that with you. What I love about the Bible, I've, I've been reading the Bible like 25 years. And what I, what I love about it and just this season that I've been in is that I recognize that God, not only does God want a personal relationship with me, like I've been talking about, but God wants a continual growing relationship, like a, a growing relationship that has um, that that spans the length of my life, right? Like that covers all areas of my life. So we think of it this way, and you've probably heard this before, like, oh man, like I, I prayed to receive Christ or I prayed the sinner's prayer. And sometimes you think about a personal relationship. Like I have a personal relationship with my wife, right? And my wife and I got married, and Scripture says this, that Jesus is the, bride, the, the groom, right, and the church is the bride of Christ. So we have this same kind of relationship, in, in a sense, right, with, with Christ. Like, like we are covenanted together. We have linked our lives. We have surrendered all of ourselves to Christ in the same way. And I, I think God beautifully uses the picture of a husband and wife so many times throughout Scripture because it gives this same idea that I'm espousing, that, that, that we're talking about together. You have this personal relationship. I have a personal relationship with my wife. But God did not intend the relationship with my wife for us to like, you know, say these vows to each other and make these great promises for us to connect together, have a great honeymoon and get back home and us not grow together anymore. Like for us not to communicate for us not to, to, to challenge each other and support each other and encourage one another and to do life together. And so this is really the second thing that God's been teaching me is that that not only does God want a personal relationship with me, but he wants a relationship with me that is growing and that is growing me, that's sharpening me in some areas where I need to be sharp. When it comes to the truth, when it comes to justice, when it comes to understanding what I stand for and what I believe and, and the Bible being God's inerrant word and, and what God says about the family and what God says about salvation and what God says about himself. And like, I need to be really, really, really sharp on those things. But when it comes to broken people, I need to be soft, right? I, I, need, to, I need to have kid gloves. I need to be able to care for people and help people and give people hope and point people to the gospel and I can't do that if I'm, not, if I'm not growing in Christ. Like he can't sharpen me. He can't soften my heart. He, he, he can't do those things if I'm not committed to a growing relationship. And the, the same with your, your spouse. And, and, and this is a marriage talk, but man, it, 
I have to be committed to growing with my wife. I have to be committed to pursuing my wife. I have to be committed to romancing my wife. And I love, you know, I love to romance my wife. Like, I like to get her some flowers. I like to drop a little letter on her. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like to turn on some music and be like, what's up, girl? I love you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love to love my wife. I love to grow with her. Like, I love to have conversations, right? Like, I, I love for, uh, to, like, to, even still, we've been married for 12 and a half years, and I love to figure out how her brain works, because, y'all, she's so much smarter than me, and she's so much more, in so many ways, like, man, she is, she's so much more compassionate than I am in some areas, and it's, her brain is just so interesting to me, like, the way she thinks, and the way she thinks about God and people, man, it, it just encourages me, and I think about what I would miss out on in my relationship with her if I was happy with the, the with the wedding, but I didn't want any part of the marriage. And I think that's where some of us are with Christ and where I've been with Christ at times. Like, I'm really, really happy with the wedding. I'm really, really happy with the day that I prayed to receive Christ, the day that I recognized that the Holy Spirit drew me to Christ and I became a believer But when I, when I trusted, when I repented of my sin and trusted in Christ alone for salvation. Like, there have been seasons where I was really happy with the wedding, but I wasn't super committed to the marriage. And that's what God's been teaching me. Like uh, Romans 1.16 says, for the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to all who believe, the Jew first and also the Greek. And so what I'm recognizing is like the gospel is powerful enough not just to save us, but to continue to do powerful things in my life, to continue to shape me, to continue to grow me, to continue to make me more and more like Christ. And so the second thing that really I'm, I'm, I'm learning from God, or I believe God is trying to teach me in this season is like, man, TJ, I want to grow you. Like, I, I want our relationship to be this, this, you know, Christocentric relationship to where you're continually growing and changing and, and, and being molded into what God has for you and God has for your family and God has for your church. And, like, like I think we miss out so many times when we get stuck on salvation and we don't move to, in the Christian world, we call it sanctification or that growing, being set apart season, like, man, we miss out on so much because, and uh, man, you see this in culture. People get really, really hyped about the wedding. They'll spend literally tens of thousands of dollars, and then they don't invest in the marriage. And so my fear sometimes is that's where we're at in, in our relationship with God. And this is what I'm learning about myself, that, that sometimes I look back on those spiritual mountaintops, and I really, really love the wedding. But sometimes I'm not super invested in the marriage. And in our relationship with God, he wants us to grow. He wants to have that deep personal relationship with us. And he wants it to be a relationship that continually grows, that shapes us, you know, that transforms us um, so that we look more like him too. And, and here's the third point, to get us to a place where, and, and when, when I, I mean, he was, you know, asking this question, I'm sitting, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, God, what are you teaching me? What am I learning? What am I willing to learn? Like, where's my heart at? All right, God wants a personal relationship with me. But God doesn't want to stop at, like, just being saved. He wants a relationship that's growing, that's transforming me, a relationship to where I'm anchoring in the power of the gospel and all that Christ Jesus did for me on Calvary. But then all that Christ wants to do in me and through me for the rest of my life, continually growing me until the day that I kick the bucket and I breathe my last breath for the purpose of, and, and here's the third thing that I'm, I'm recognizing. I challenge our staff um, Monday, um, and, and all of this, I think, <laughs> comes out of like just what God is teaching me and what I'm being willing to learn um, for the purpose of telling this story over and over and over for the rest of our lives. And we get to do that in whatever, in, in whatever capacity uh, that we operate in, right? Like I'm a pastor, um, so it, you know, I get to stand up on Sundays and I, I get to teach the word of God. I get to preach the word of God. I get to counsel people, I get to point people to the scriptures. I get to tell the greatest story that has ever touched earth, that God sends one and only son to die in our place. Jesus, hundred percent God, hundred percent man died for us. And so God wants a relationship that's personal. He wants one that's growing, but I, I'll say it this way. God wants a relationship that's also going to the world with the greatest news that has ever touched earth. I challenged our staff. I said that a few minutes ago, but I challenged our staff this past uh, week. I said, man, who's the one person in your life that needs to hear this story, this true story? Who's the one, what, like, is there one person in your life? And, and I challenged them. I said, listen, I want you to pick one person to share the gospel with this week. 
And I went as far as to say, listen, I'm going to ask you next Monday at our staff meeting. I'm like, I'm going to go around the room and ask you, how did it go when you shared the gospel with that one person? And I, I've got a person on my mind, that, on my heart. Like I've been working up and yeah, I'm, I'm a pastor, but sometimes I have to work up some courage to, to cold call, I guess you'd say, or like, like I'm just going to launch into the gospel with this person and share the good news of Jesus Christ. And like, sometimes it's not always the most comfortable conversation or the easiest thing to do, or, you know, it's not the perfect setting, but man, this is, this is why we exist to have a personal relationship with God, to grow in that relationship with God and then take that same news, that same gospel truth to a world that is desperate for the love of God, a world that is that is crumbling around us. And you look at all the geopolitical stuff that's going on in the world. You look at all the injustice, the brokenness, the needs around us. It seems like the world is caving in on itself. And when you have Jesus, you have all of the cure. You have all of the remedy. You have all of the hope forever. And so I wonder today, and, and so I'll say it like this, God has been pressing on my heart and teaching me, reminding me, I'm, I'm relearning some of these things, that he wants this personal relationship with me, but not just a one-time encounter like a wedding. He wants this growing long-term relationship with me to where I'm, I'm being shaped and I'm being molded and I'm being challenged. And I'm being encouraged. I'm being convicted. I'm, I'm being lifted up. Like he wants this growing relationship so that I can go and tell the world about this relationship that not only do I have a personal relationship with King Jesus, but that you can have a personal relationship with King Jesus. Not only has God grown me out of my sin and out of my brokenness and out of my trauma and away from my past and into a son of God, a child of a king, a warrior for the cross, all these things that he has made me, not only has he done that for someone like me, but he can do that for you. This is the purpose, right? This is the whole idea of the gospel, that we get to know God, grow in God, and then go for God. And, and, and so today, uh, I'll, I'll end it differently, right, than usual. Do you have a personal relationship with God? Like, do you have a personal relationship with King Jesus? Do you know, have you been convinced that God loves you more than anything in the world? He created you. He formed you. And Scripture says that, that He loves you so much that He sent His one and only Son that whoever would believe in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. God loves you. And he wants a personal relationship. Now, maybe you say, okay, TJ, I have a personal relationship or I don't, I don't, know, I don't know what that means. I have questions about that. TJ Maul and Leadership Podcast at gmail.com. You email us. We will we will connect with you. We'll have that conversation with you about what it means to have a personal relationship. But and do you have a personal relationship with King Jesus? And then, if you do have a personal relationship with King Jesus, are you growing? Like, like, are are you allow? Are you reading the Word of God? Like, are you spending time in prayer? Like, are you growing? Are you being challenged, or are you saying no to sin so you can say yes to Christ? Are you willfully putting down old hurts, habits, and hangups so you can pick up the hope of the gospel that is in Christ? And then, lastly, are you going? I say this, man. There, there are millions, billions, billions of people that do not have the hope of the gospel. They don't know Jesus. And they need somebody to tell them. And so in the same way that I challenge my staff, I'll challenge you. Who are you going to share with this week? Is there somebody in your life that you know they just need a little hope? They need, they need, they need a reminder that there is a God that loves them, that is for them, that paid a high price for their soul. And he wants a personal relationship with them that is growing so that they too can one day be sent out. Who is that one person this week? that you'll share the gospel with, that you'll tell your story. And I know what you're saying. Oh, TJ, man, my, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a pastor. I'm inadequate, right? <laughs> you're preaching, your pastor's inadequate too, all right? So, uh, like, I, I'm not a great talker. I'm not a great orator, TJ. I, I, don't, I don't know how to share the gospel. Listen, there's this beautiful, beautiful picture in the New Testament when Stephen, who ends up being the first martyr, 
Stephen stands up and he just tells a story. And he, he tells the things that he knows about God. He mentions some patriarchs. And then like, he just talks. And so you say, like, TJ, I don't know how to share the God. Just tell your story. Like, if you've encountered a God that loves you, if you've encountered God, if he's transformed your life, just tell somebody about that. Tell somebody about that encounter. Tell somebody about the transformation. And then pray that God would do a work in their heart that you can't do and ultimately they can't do. Only the Holy Spirit can do. Listen, God wants a personal relationship with you. He wants a personal relationship that is growing with you. And he wants a personal relationship that will send you out, that will be a going relationship as you move through life as a dad, as a boss, as a coach, as a parent, as a spouse, you are taking the gospel, the greatest story that has ever touched earth, the greatest true story that has ever touched earth. You get to take that to the world. So maybe I'll end it like this today. What is God teaching you? What's God saying to you today? Can you answer that question? Love y'all. If you have any questions, uh, always reach out to us, TJ Mon, uh, leadership podcast at gmail.com. Again, if you think if you're thinking of somebody, man, share this, like it, subscribe, do all the things. The team works really hard. And this is this is it for this season, season two. This is the last episode. Uh, so we're gonna take a breather as a as a crew and as a staff. Huge, incredible thank you to Ryan and Lindley and Graco. Um they are, man, y'all, they work behind the scenes to make this thing all that it is, and and all the credit really goes to them. They're really hard workers, and they're full of excellence, and I just love them, and they're great. So uh, thank them if you get a chance. If you see it on Instagram or, um, you know, in the email even, you, you're, you have uh, my encouragement to encourage them. So we love y'all. See you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the TJ Malden Leadership Podcast, where we talk about life, leadership, and the gospel. If you enjoyed this episode, share with a friend. For more content, follow us on Instagram and YouTube. If you have any questions you would like to ask TJ, whether it is about life, leadership, or the gospel, you can email those to TJ Malden Leadership Podcast at gmail.com. Thank you again for listening, and we hope you join us again on the TJ Malden Leadership Podcast.